Hello and welcome back. In this short lecture, we're going to create relevant to Mac OE specific endpoint prediction related profiles. To create that, go back to Microsoft Intune and device configuration and point to profiles. I click on create a profile and give a meaningful name. In this case, I'm just giving here as Mac OS profile settings. You can give here as whatever the description you wanted. For example, I'm going to configure here definitely the platform as Mac OS. And then I'm going to give here as profile type as endpoint protection. In the previous lecture, we did already talked about device features and device restrictions. Now it's time to learn about endpoint protection. When you configure the endpoint protection, here you have the three different uh, categories of settings are available. To begin with, Gatekeeper. Gatekeeper will allow you to limit the applications uh, a device that can launch depending on where the applications were actually downloading from. This uh, intent uh, is to protect basically the devices from malware and allow apps from only the source you trust. For example, you want to allow the only specific applications from uh, only App Store. In that situation, only the apps that you are downloading from the App Store only will be trusted so that the applications are more trusted. So the best configuration would be Mac App Store as well as the identified developers, not from anywhere because that might lead to some kind of malicious applications maybe or malware applications maybe uh, appear from uh, it can lead to some of the security concerns. Now let's uh, save and then go back to the firewall settings. In the firewall settings, you have an options to control connections per applications or uh, maybe a per port. And using per application settings makes it easier to get the benefit of firewall protection. It also helps you to prevent uh, desirable app apps uh, from taking control of your network port and uh, uh, legitimate uh, apps for example here i can configure here to firewall as enable and this would actually allows me to uh, uh, create a rule specific on uh, maybe application bundle or app store app for the only allowing the apps and again here if you can look at here to allow that specific app you need to get that app list uh, with the app bundle id so the bundle id information uh, we can get it from that links which we have already discussed if you can remember bundle ids we can get it either from the microsoft site or from the apple site and also uh, coming back to the blocking of specific applications you can always block with the block uh, by bundle id or app store and if you go to the app store you can search here the required apps there's no managed apps as of now but you know if we configure the managed apps uh, then it would be listed those specific apps so that apps can be blocked and that's how it's going to be configured for the firewall specific settings you also have the stealth mode configuration which prevents the computer from responding to probing request if a computer is trying to probe the request then uh, it's gonna uh, it will respond to that, but it will enable the stealth mode. The device computers to answer incoming requests for unauthorized apps, but unexpected requests such as, uh, for example, pings are uh, ignored in that situation. So uh, that kind of configuration you can configure and click OK to enable those specific settings and come back to the file vault. File vault file what will be used for the full disk encryption uh, either xts hyphen aes specific 128 with uh, file wall 2 uh, kind of you know encryption can be configured so let's enable the specific setting and the personal recovery key is automatically will be created for those specific devices and you need to give that specific location of that personal recovery key so that users knows that hey that key information let's uh, we need to specify that hey short message to the users that explains how and where they can receive the specific um, personal recovery key this text is uh, inserted into messages uh, the users seen on their logon screen in the uh, in, in screen when prompting prompted to be entered their personal recovery if the password is uh, forgotten and now uh, let's also configure here uh, this message uh, is like uh, I, I can give you as uh, this text is inserted 
uh, this text is inserted to the message like that I can give the information and coming back to the personal recovery key rotation which is nothing but uh, it's gonna uh, specify how frequently the personal recovery key for a device will rotate uh, you can collect uh, you can you can basically select that uh, default value from the non con not configured to uh, from value one month to 12 months uh, I can see that uh, they should be rotated every month and coming back to the uh, disable uh, prompt it sign out this specific setting will help you uh, to prevent the prompt to the users uh, that request the enable file vault when they sign out for example if you enable here by default it's going to be you not know, configured but if you enable what would happen is uh, the prompt at the sign out is disabled and instead of that the user is prompted when they sign in so that's how it's gonna work a number of uh, times allowed to bypass you can configure the specific setting uh, to set the number of times a user can ignore uh, prompts to enable file vault before file vault is actually required for the user sign in and that config Configuration can be done uh, from this drop down here uh, it can configure from 1 to 10 and there's no limit also always by pause so that would uh, actually by pause but encryption never uh, never required it, uh, at the end so it's better that you know you can uh, give maybe 3 to 4 between the value that would be uh, by paused uh, that can be you no know, configured and click OK to configure all these settings and then uh, you can configure uh, you can give the meaningful name in this case uh, it's going to be settings 2 so set 2 which I wanted to give and click create and that would uh, create me a profile uh, relevant to Mac OS profile and I can assign to the relevant uh, group so in my case I want to assign for all the users or you want me to assign for only specific group to be included so I'm going to choose here only all finance users group so that group can be selected and uh, if I save it's gonna apply that specific setting if I don't want any of these policies uh, so far we have confirmed we wanted to exclude you can always exclude by selecting a specific group here for example I don't want this policy to be happen uh, for all EMS users but I wanted to uh, apply for only all finance users such a way you can configure all this and you can also evaluate the specific policy so that uh, it would take for uh, the two specific users who are part of all uh, finance users gonna uh, get that specific policy will be implemented in another few minutes of time that's how it's gonna work thank you for watching this to continuation with the Mac profile creation we would like to create one more profile by clicking on create and give a meaningful name and description and select your platform as Mac operating system and now we're gonna discuss in this uh, video lecture we also would like to cover PKCS trusted certificate SEP certificate uh, these three of them we would like to cover at once so let's uh, take the PKCS imported certificate uh, before that let's go to the uh, if you have the certificate already available because yes you can uh, what is the purpose it's going to be general or for the email encryption or for the memory signing you can choose that and you can click on ok that would actually creates the uh, required configuration here under uh, PKCS imported certificate and coming back to the trusted certificate this is where you're gonna actually give the valid CER uh, file for example if you have the CER file here uh, that file uh, would be uploaded and then you would be giving that trusted certificate and coming back to the other configurations here for example if you want to configure SEP certificate you would be configuring here the required SEP configuration like is it going for the user or specific to do device and then uh, you would be entering all that uh, relevant values post to that uh, once it is uh, configured all these values then you would be applying that specific settings so this is how you're gonna uh, work with all these three different certificates let's jump into the VPN profile type uh, if you want to create for the VPN profile you can create directly by giving a, a proper name for example if this is Cisco or VPN or maybe this is for uh, your region maybe in this case Asia Pack and then I would be you know, entering my FQDN of uh, my VPN server uh, or maybe I would be entering here the IP address in my case if I feel that IP is comfortable I can go and I can give that IP address and then simply authentication method I would be choosing what kind of authentication is going to be a certificate if so I need to you know import that specific certificate which is given by your firewall admin or your VPN server admin uh, and that certificate I need to import here and then it would be available that specific certificate 
and if it is used in password based I need to you know, select whether what kind of that uh, client application you wanted to deploy for example if you're configuring for the checkpoint uh, you need to you know uh, select here checkpoint relevant if it is Cisco any connect you can take the Cisco uh, any connect and based on your configuration of your server do you want to allow for the split tunneling or the full tunnel so if it is split tunnel you can select that and click OK that would actually configure your base VPN configuration and now you need to configure your VPN uh, settings which are relevant uh, in this case like you want to connect this VPN automatically or on a specific uh, application when it is launched such things can be configured in the specific automatic VPN configuration let's say I wanted it auto on demand it should be configured for example I want to add here uh, I want to do when a VPN to be established when I uh, I want to do when the specific SSID is connected or maybe I want to do for all the domains such configuration can be done so that specific uh, uh, specifically that time only the VPN connection would automatically starts connecting similarly per app also you can configure here uh, after you create your profiles uh, you need to know set up the per app uh, level VPN configuration here if you know that a specific uh, URL or the VPN um, to be you no know, triggered you can give here so that it's specific apps only when it is launched automatically it's gonna uh, app specific uh, VPN would be you know, connected now uh, let's jump into the uh, proxy settings this VPN configuration when it is established do you want to allow the proxy uh, for example since we get the IP address from our VPN server in that VPN network do you want to uh, configure some specific uh, proxy configuration for example if they have the pack file uh, complete URL you can give that pack file URL and if you know that a specific proxy server IP address you can give that IP address as well as the port number and then you can click on OK that would actually configure your VPNs you can click on OK and then you can also configure uh, similarly uh, Wi-Fi specific settings like this Wi-Fi uh, we did already talked about in the previous sections uh, or previous lectures for different type of platform uh, like iOS and Windows we did all, already talked about the you would be you know, getting like two different uh, Wi-Fi types like basic as well as the enterprise so the spe specific settings which uh, we were talked about like giving the SSID name connect automatically and that these information you would be getting from your uh, firewall admin or maybe uh, in this case maybe a Wi-Fi admin who who is managing this network uh, that persons would be you know, providing all these information and you can enter that specific information for example if SSID was given as uh, uh, like Redmond location maybe uh, this is corp uh, specific one then uh, corporation related and you can connect automatically if it is that specific SSID is inside the uh, range uh, range to connect and also hide the network if you don't want to broadcast your SSID then it's gonna configure this specific kind of you know configuration but uh, uh, mostly you know it would be broadcast and then would be the security type you want to apply what kind of you know, security it would be open authentication that means there will not be any password kind of you know, authentication instead uh, you can you know go for the uh, WPA or WPA2 personal here you can share the pre-shared key uh, so that this specific key is already configured on your Wi-Fi routers and it gets established the connection and during that establishment you want to configure some kind of proxy settings you can configure always or you can manually enter the specific uh, proxy address details also that's how you can configure the basic similar settings would have appear for the enterprise also uh, but only the difference would be the protocols uh, you have the more protocols to configure here for the EAP type choose that specific EAP protocol what you wanted to choose and then if any kind of you know certif certificate to be you know configured as a root certificate or client authentication certificate configure that specific certificates and that concludes how to configure your Wi-Fi profiles now let's jump into the extensions also this kernel extensions gives you uh, additional level of features at the kernel level these features access uh, access part of your OS at that regularly uh, programs can't access so your organization may have specific needs or requirements that aren't available on your apps a device feature and so on then you can you know configure this kernel extensions this uh, to add the kernel extension that are always allowed to load on devices or kernel extensions or sometimes refer as uh, 
KEXT text uh, in Microsoft Intune. Let's take one example and try to understand, you know, how this works uh, or, or what kind of, you know, requirement it actually happens or when we need to, you know, configure this specific policy. For example, uh, you have a wireless scanning program that uh, requires a scanning of your device for a malicious content and you can add this uh, virus scanning programs uh, at the kernel extension level so that it's allowed uh, to run in under kernel extensions so that kind of configurations can be assigned or created with the help of kernel extensions in Microsoft Intune and uh, to work this feature really you need to have Mac OS 10, uh, 10 .13.2 and above otherwise it doesn't work uh, the specific feature and if you want to learn more about kernel extensions you can always visit kernel extension or your page uh, from Mac uh, from Apple website uh, as a developer you can look at here kernel extension overview uh, or sometimes we refer as text as I said uh, this or uh, this is the information you can uh, go through this if you want to know how to get the team identifies as well as the bundle ID information, all you have to do is simply use the specific commands like uh, SQLite to be installed on that uh, Mac OS uh, starting from 10.13 uh, Apple and then you can you know, change the directory uh, to the specific and then you can run uh, this specific command on Mac operating systems that would give the exact information of uh, of the information for example in this case uh, the first uh, value is whatever it is coming as the output as this complete output that would be your team ID and the bundle ID would be the post to that whatever dot com uh, com dot google uh, dfs use dot file system dot dfs uh, fuse whatever it is coming is this is your bundle id so you need to uh, get that uh, information and then input it here so that that means you need to have at least one test machine and you should have the values uh, readily handy so that you can configure here this uh, specific configuration so that the canon mode extensions can be enabled uh, this uh, this is how you're going to configure and coming back to the custom custom as we talked in the previous uh, lecture uh, especially for iOS specific we talked about the similar settings would be appeared here too but uh, let's uh, talk one more time um, so that you would uh, you would be very clear so what happens is with the custom profile is a feature within the Intune so what you can do is you can create custom settings for your Mac OS devices as a custom profile which are not part of your Intune so let's say uh, these features are not available within the Intune but you wanted that uh, specific configurations to be customized then you would be using the custom uh, profile to configure so what you need is you need to uh, you need to use two of the uh, two of the tools to export that custom settings either you would be you know, going back to the Apple configurator or you would be going to the profile manager so any of these tools you would be using and then you configure that specific settings on that uh, devices and then you would be exporting later point you would import here as a XML file format that way uh, it's gonna uh, it's gonna actually uh, import that specific setting and uh, that specific settings whatever you have configured under your customs uh, custom things or custom uh, options that would be applied as the enterprise level as one of the standard for your Mac OS devices uh, that concludes the entire uh, section for the Mac OS. Thank you for watching this.